So welcome everyone. Welcome to the first Hupper show. The Hupper show. The first episode. Um, <laughs> and today we have uh, Natalia Akras. Akras. It's a basically she's Polish. She's a commission painter. And she's amazing. And I thought I'd get her on the show and we can talk about her pieces and life and painting. And this is the first part of that show. Uh, and I'm sorry that I can't pronounce your surname. So yeah, let's jump in. Up the show. I didn't, I, I think that's something I never ever imagine is when I see your models, I've got them, we're gonna, I can show them later when we start talking about them. I never imagine the painting desks and how they look. Uh, yeah, mine looks like that. It looks a lot better than I, <laughs> I, ever would have imagined. It's taller. It's a lot taller than I thought. Uh, yeah, I, um, my painting desk was a lot bigger. It was in an L shape. Mm -hmm. But I decided to make it smaller just because uh, I I just wasn't using a part of, of the setup. Yeah. So I want smaller. And it's I think that it's perfect now. Yeah, I think that my... Um, do you ever find that you have too many paints? Uh, yes, that's why okay. I've um, I, I've um, gave away uh, most of them, and now I just have uh, Sky Sky seventy five minis and some Vallejo, but or Vallejo, uh, and <laughs> get the Spanish person to say it to you, and then they'll they'll correct you whenever you say it. Seriously, because yeah, yeah. when um, uh, when I started painting miniatures, I wanted to go buy these paints. And uh, mm -hmm. I wasn't sh sure how to say it, so uh, I started mm -hmm. che che checking it out on the internet, and yeah. everyone was uh, spelling it uh, some other way. Yeah, yeah. I, I I don't know how to say it, but if I had to guess, it would it would be I'd say Vallejo, Vallejo, but but there's a J, right? Vallejo. Yeah, it's a J. I, I have no idea. Vallejo saying sounds the okay. But I, I, I just used to say it Vallejo uh, when uh, I was talking with my Polish friends because, uh, so, to be honest, we just don't care about the right <laughs> Yeah, I'm with you on that. <laughs> it was Vallejo for us. Vallejo, I mean... <laughs> but it's painful for us to speak other languages, yeah? Especially, especially when we're not uh, good at it. So they could at least spare <laughs> <for> us <laughs> the pain. <laughs> but you, you don't try and speak Spanish, right? No, I, I'm very bad at languages, so... It's, uh, except English, for English. Yeah. English is the comfort zone for me, and anything uh, <laughs> other than Polish is just, no, no, please no. Do you ever find um, speaking English annoying because you have to change your J's and your W's? Um, uh, when I learned English, uh, for a very long time, I wasn't, wasn't speaking it. So I had Got small you. practice in my school, and then for very, very, uh, for a lot of years, I, I just uh, didn't practice it. Uh, so um, I actually, <laughs> actually, I don't know, maybe two months ago, started spe speaking speaking English on Discord. Just two uh, months. You, oh, okay, but you learned it before. Yeah, 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 yeah. Uh, a lot, lo lo lot, earlier. And yeah. uh, it was so painful for me just to uh, try to speak it for more than 20 minutes, minutes because uh, mm -hmm. you use the, all the mouth muscles uh, in the other way than... Po I'd po never po thought po of that. Yeah, that is actually quite true. Yeah, and the J's and the, they are not that bad, but the R's and uh, no, there are, there are some parts of English that are just painful. <laughs> I think so. I think, well, I can't speak Polish, uh, but I imagine that I'd have the same problem if I was speaking Polish. Uh, usually people uh, with Polish people have problems with our uh, sh 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 Yeah, oh, that's my gosh. <laughs> I, I think is my grandma was Polish, but she never ever taught us. Hold on, we're frozen. I'll pause it. Right there, I paused it. Um, what was I saying? Mm. Yeah. Uh, talking about English. Oh, yeah. Um, well, I can't remember. What I was going to say is, 
Polish painting scene, in my opinion, because I was thinking about it, right? I was like, before I came up with the right answer in my head, I was like, there won't be many painters in Poland just because. And then I was like, that's completely wrong. There's loads and loads and loads of painters in Poland. Mm -hmm. I've wondered why. And then I was like, why is it that you guys like painting more? Or it's more like, it seems, maybe that it's changing a little bit, but growing up painting was not a cool thing to do, if that makes sense. Mm -hmm. And I don't uh, know if... To be honest, I don't know. Uh, I mean, I was uh, always a fan of, uh, of fantasy, so for me, painting miniature mm. wasn't that bad uh, to go <laughs> into. And yeah. uh, I, to be honest, I don't know why Warhammer was got so popular uh, in the 90s mm. in Poland. It just did. Yeah. yeah but all right, why are you guys better at painting than us? Or at least I know that's not I know that's a sweeping statement, but it's, um, okay, it's a different style. Maybe is a better way of saying it. Yeah, it's uh, because hmm, have have to uh, form this statement um, <laughs> in a non-offensive <laughs> way. Uh, because uh, I think that uh, Polish painters uh, tend to be better technical. Uh, mm. technically in painting uh, just because um, uh, we as the nation like to uh, kick uh, ourselves with with um, yeah, to be better at them at it with comments like um, okay you did it well but you could do it better uh, and just <laughs> you know, a bit hating ourselves always yeah yeah that's why it's... we try our best to just do everything good and well. Because the, the technique thing, I guess, is something that you can get better at. Like, if you, the more you practice, you'll see you'll get better. Whereas if, if someone who, like, for me, I, I feel like I could get better technically a lot faster than I could just get better at being arty, if that makes sense. Mm -hmm, mm -hmm. I don't know if that statement's true, but... Uh, yeah, it's... Uh... It is different because uh, you can try to inter interpret the miniature in some fantasy yeah. way. I don't know how to say it. And yeah. you can just try to uh, paint the best non-metallic metal and yeah. stuff like that. So, I mean, it's nothing uh, bad to in not interpreting the miniatures and trying to be artsy, but yeah. it's some people just don't don't focus on on that thing yeah i think um, it's i think <laughs> before i i've been back in the hobby for like five years now i think and i i did a painting course with alfonso like mm -hmm. four years ago and and then probably two years ago i realized oh i want to get better at painting and not just i don't know sort of be there um but then i stopped but anyway the point was the, the difference I realized that before I had my kind of eyes opened up to the art world, I was really focused on like blending mm -hmm. sort of technique, making them basically just games workshop style. Cause I didn't know anything else existed. Um, but now I see people like the one who comes to mind most is the tall German Roman. Um, mm -hmm. it, I feel like he interprets models very differently from other people. Uh, and I liked, especially when I first saw the stuff, I was like, I liked it more as art rather than a beautifully painted, perfect miniature. Mm -hmm. And that was the first time that I saw pieces where I was like, oh shit, it actually works, even though it's not Games Workshop. Like it's a, mm -hmm. yeah, a feeling. I, I think as uh, as a painter, if you want to be, um, I mean, it's not not only in uh, miniature painting. I think that uh, if you want to be good at something, then first you need to master the techniques and the basics uh, yeah. and the uh, uh, color theory and the stuff like that. And then you can just go and uh, do whatever the fuck you want. <laughs> <laughs> Just break the break the basic rules uh, yeah. because you, you just know when you're breaking the rules and uh, and you're not just ignorant because you don't know them. Yeah, yeah, it's wow. It's a 
that's like a powerful sentence because or thing because I'd never really considered it. I think I, I don't know what other people are like. I like to not have to do. In fact, most people are like, I like to not put the effort in, but still think I'm going to get the results. Mm-hmm. Just like I like to just paint and and think this is going to turn out well. And then when I get to like 75 percent of the model, I'm like, it didn't turn out well. Uh, and that's probably because my basics aren't very good. Uh, yeah, know. but with every painted model, uh, uh, you can you're making progress anyway. So even mm. if you do something uh, badly and you're not successful, then to you then you just take the experience, uh, and you know next time that you shouldn't do that. So yeah, yeah. it's uh, just not focusing always on on just learning the good thing. Uh, maybe the positive experience too. Just because you always always learn and always um, just take something new. Uh, the most important thing for me is just to paint. Yeah. Because if I you think... don't paint, you don't learn, basically. Yeah. I think that the attitude that you just said and that whole concept took, like, I feel like I'm getting there now, slowly, of the idea that don't, paint basically I was only ever motivated to paint when it was a competition and then I realized I'm not good enough to win a competition even if I try my absolute hardest um so it it meant that I could either just stop painting because I'm annoyed that I'll never win anything stop painting to win competitions and just paint because I enjoy the painting and the journey and hopefully learn when I get there I think I don't have the other option but I think like they were the, the kind of options. So I, I said, okay, I'll just, I won't paint a competition piece now for like, uh, until I feel comfortable enough to enter again. Mm-hmm. I think I'm just getting to that phase now where, so like for a year, I just, or maybe a little bit longer from going from where I was, I'd paint like two models a year and I'd focus and I'd spend like a hundred hours on something that, that <laughs> you know, it was the best I could do, but it didn't look that good. Now I'm much more like, I'll try and paint five models but I still get stuck and then I can't resolve it and then I get annoyed with it. So I move on to the next one. Mm-hmm. Um, but so, when um, you uh, start your paint jobs, do you uh, plan uh, the composition and the placement of lights? And This is where I like talking to you because you have all these, these ideas and you've already got that, like that knowledge. Like, I think, I think I'd do a bit. I don't know, like, I'd like to talk through some of your pieces um, because then you can give me some uh, insight into it because I think I do, but yeah, I definitely don't enough. This this piece, you can see the screen, can't you? The, mm-hmm. yeah. 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 This piece was the piece that I saw, the first thing I saw of yours, and I didn't know it was yours. Mm-hmm. Uh, and it was actually only after we approached you to interview that I realized it was yours. Um, and uh, yeah, I loved it. And I think what was interesting was the twofold for me was the fact that it was not something from wartime, um, but also something that the, the colors are super vibrant, but they're really controlled. Um, mm-hmm. And for some reason at the moment, the like bright colors, almost fluorescent or the feeling of fluorescence is something I love. Like I really love it. Uh, and I don't fully understand how you managed to achieve it because like the things that really uh, sort of obviously the hair because I find hair interesting because I always tend to want to just paint uh, like this is more like an anime style in my head Um, but maybe that's just the way to resolve hair but I always look at hair and try and paint like each individual brush or hair strand Mm -hmm. and it just doesn't make sense and then these were the bits that I love the most. I think you can see like here, um, basically the kind of bluey turquoise yellow to create the highlights. Um, oddly, which is probably more impressive maybe from a technical and thinking point of view the OSL, but I was still more in love with the, you know, these kind of, can you see my mouse? Mm-hmm. Yeah. 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 Okay, cool. Yeah. Uh, yeah, I don't know why they were the bits, but yeah, you asked me, do I think about my lighting? Do I think about my color composition? Um, 
I try to, but definitely not. Like, how would you approach this piece, or how did you approach it? Mm -hmm. uh, well, uh, first of all, um, I I'll talk mostly about the um, general uh, uh, rules of my um, painting miniatures. Mm -hmm. um, when I start painting something, I uh, like to have the idea of um, uh, of just interpretation of that of, of this mini. So sometimes I just want to paint one uh, one element. Like with this one, uh, it was the um, heart in her eyes, uh, yeah. and I just uh, went further with this idea, uh, and um, I decided that I want her to have uh, pink eyes, mm -hmm. um, and so I needed uh, to place them like story-wise in this bust, uh, in this bust. So I gave her pink uh, cup. And I have, and th those ma were my basic colors. I knew that I want, I need the skin color for her, for her face. I knew mm. that I want magenta and um, yellow highlight in yeah, it. So uh, and then I just, um, I was Perfect. thinking which colors would uh, work well with uh, with them. Um, so I uh, picked the um, dark blue. Yeah. Because I just like this color. <laughs> and then I decided <laughs> yes, that yeah. it would just color wise uh, would uh, work well with the green mint and uh, yellow highlights on the sweater. And uh, I always um, I also decided to make the cap uh, highlighted with yellow. So I just added the yellow to the uh, to her sweater. And yeah. then then I just ah, it's yellow. It. <laughs> yeah, uh, and then I just needed to pick the um, details which I wanted to put in the in the in this bust. So um, the strand of hairs and uh, small uh, details on the sweater because I I didn't want to paint the whole uh, texture of the sweater because it, it just would be too painful for me. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, to so it was more like here and yeah. here. So I just so, uh, the su suggestion, su suggestions which work really well. Well, and I and to be honest, you not always have to paint everything. You just yeah. need to, uh, to su suggest it. I th yeah, yeah. Well, I think, and I've heard it before. The whole idea that your you know people's brains will um, fill in the blanks, as it were. So if you can suggest an idea then the brain will work out and automatically say okay then that's the reflection and that's I, I like to me it makes total sense but it's not obtainable like it doesn't i don't know if that comes with mm -hmm, skill. But, look, uh, sorry i just because i wanted to jump to the hair <clears throat> yeah 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 uh, the same thing works with her actually because you see i um, i mean this boost is just perfect for this but um when you paint her you don't you you don't need to treat every strand of hair like um like a strand of hair but you just need to take the whole hair the whole shape of her and uh, treat it like the one shape so and then you can add some details here, here and there to just show show the texture, um, how how does it work? So um, so you know it's and it's much less painful to paint the whole uh, shape of hair yeah. uh, and just add some details than paint each each strand of hair yeah. separately. Yeah, I mean. I guess it's the, it's like the logic is always there, but it's it's the practice that you say like that needs to be there to be able to make the mistakes to know to then do it properly. <laughs> like you you know it would well it might have been, but I imagine you've painted hair before. Um, um, I was painting. Um, I was drawing drawing before, so I have yeah, uh, okay. more art artsy. <laughs> yeah, yeah, artistic. How um, oh, I totally had better things to say, but how long did it take this guy or girl? I oh, I, it's hard to say because I started painting her 
uh, in like December of 2019, and I finished her uh, in in a April this year. Uh, so almost. it's hard to tell, but I don't know. Maybe maybe a week. It's always the it's same. Not bad, though, is it? I do think the well, not think definitely. The better you get, the faster it gets. But also the the, the more enjoyable it, it kind of gets because when you're able to no, <laughs> you no. don't think. <laughs> The less enjoyable it gets, because you just the the I don't know. It's at least it's my experience. The more knowledge I get, the the more things I know I have to place uh, to put into the miniature to to it just look well and um, you know I like to um, get the idea of the model and I I plan further what I have to do. Uh, what what paints I need to do, what what it would be uh, correct to 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 make, and is you know when I start the project I just have the big ladder to to climb on and it's, sometimes it's just too much for me. That's interesting. I know um, with like programming is the only thing that I have where I've gotten good at it, and where I start out programming isn't like writing, well applications or websites or whatever. Um, the more I learned, the more it opened up kind of doorways for more knowledge. Like when I started, I was like, oh, I don't know anything. And then I was quick, quickly, I was like, oh, I, I know quite a lot. And then as time progressed, I was like, I basically know nothing. And, and now I'm like 12 years into programming. I'm like, I know a lot of stuff. I know there's a load of stuff I don't know. But every time I learn something, it, it means that I have to, well, it just opens up a new doorway of, of knowledge. like. And mm -hmm. I guess I'm, I'm I'm finding that out with painting, but I think you can always tell. I think anyway, when somebody is painting a model, and like maybe they don't understand much of the theories or practices, but the model still works. And then you can tell when someone is very good, and maybe yeah, basically it looks more simple, but it looks more impressive. If that makes sense. Mm -hmm. So like yeah, because um, uh, when the uh, when you get more experience, you just know uh, that you don't need to um, I don't know uh, just you need to give the model proper composition, and it's usually I don't know maybe two points of interest, three points of interest, because uh, your your eyes need to go in the right directions. So if you make too many details or yeah. I don't know too many colors, then it just won't work well because uh, you want you the people won't know where to look. Yeah, yeah, and it's overwhelming. Mm -hmm. I think so. I guess the the logic on the composition was basically you picked your main color, which was pink, which you I guess you liked, and you essentially work backwards from there. You're like, okay, so I. I want pink to be the eyes, so I need to have pink somewhere else. So mm -hmm. I put it on the pot, and then obviously the complementary of pink is like turquoisey green. Mm -hmm. Yes. Yeah. So then that's where the top comes in, and then obviously the hair kind of just sorts itself out. And I guess you went cold on the back of the hair. It's weird though because the blue on the back of the hair is technically cold, but it feels warm to. I'm still like. Uh, uh, the warm cold thing kind of annoys me. I suppose you've got contrast there because you've got the warm cup and then the cold top. Mm -hmm. Brilliant. <laughs> yeah, but uh, the uh, contrast uh, of the temperature temperature is <laughs> it's your friend basically because you yeah. have uh, one more way to uh, to compose your miniature. Yeah, yeah. Thank you guys. Thank you for staying through the whole video and thank you for watching. I uh, hope you enjoyed Natalia. She is a commission painter, so if you if you want any of your models painted for box art or just for your cabinets, then just drop a, a message. I'll put the links in the description and I did put them on the video for the first half. And of course, for Miniature Art TV, we will have more of these videos for this segment, the Hot for Show. Uh, and... <laughs> We've also got more from Natalia as well, uh, so watch out for those. And if you want to get notified, yeah, just subscribe. Uh, and if you have anything to say, comment, because we love interacting and we appreciate any feedback or just interact. Yeah, cheers. See you later. Bye-bye.